What dating apps have you guys been on? Tinder. Grindr. Tinder. Uh, just those two. Talking about Bumble as well. Uh, Bumble, yeah, that's the one. Hinge, Bumble. What ones do you? Tinder. I think Tinder is a little bit more of a casual relationship thing. Tinder. Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> As you're watching this, millions of people are looking for partners on Tinder, the dating app that's changed how an entire generation meets new people. Yeah, I, I met my <laughs> partner on Tinder. Yeah. Um, how long have you guys been together? About two years. I know some friends that got married from Tinder and they're really happy. That's the future, I guess, you know? It's not so much like, you can't meet a girl at the bar anymore, it's all on, on apps. This catalogue of love interests at our fingertips has obvious appeal. But the app that's made meeting up with strangers the new normal is hiding a sinister problem. He looked down on me and he just said straight face to me, well, you're not allowed to leave until I come. He, yeah, then pulled his pants off um, and just sort of just went for it and just um, raped me. It was horrifying. It was so terrifying to know that this man hadn't stopped what he was doing. One of the top earning apps in the world has created a playground for sex offenders, leaving victims neglected. It makes me mad that this platform is making money off of people that are being hurt and then they can't even respond properly when people are hurt. What are you doing with your money? In a joint investigation with Hack on Triple J, we look at the dating app Tinder and how it's built a business model that exposes its users to assault and how it's allowing serial sexual predators to thrive on its platform. <laughs> 